here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk Radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk Radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. We're basically having a good time today, kind of visiting with some friends, doing remembrances, swapping stories, thinking about Christmas, and for a lot of us growing up, Christmas was about hunting, going to hunting camp, maybe getting a new gun for Christmas. You know, there's a whole lot that goes with that. It's, you know, youth guns, uh, adult guns, what calibers, and then, of course, the attachment of, okay, now there's a responsibility on the part of the adults to make sure that the youngsters are safe and you teach them and, and bring them along the right way. Well, joining me right now is a Got a longtime friend now. We've known each other forever, Chris Calloy. He's the president and CEO of Ruger Firearms. Hey, Chris, how are you, sir? Oh, trying to get Chris in here. Okay. Hey, Chris, you there? Okay. All right. We're trying to round him up there. We see. Uh, I think we had a phone issue. We'll try to get him in. Uh, the uh, good folks over at Ruger talking about uh, youth guns. I was thinking about that. They have quite a few guns that would be suitable for introducing youngsters to the shooting sports. Um, you know, obviously you got your 1022s, which is like, you know, everybody ought to have one kind of category. And I don't, I don't even know if they know. Probably there's somebody there who knows how many they make. They got a lot of different models of that. But you go back, and I was thinking about what uh, Johnny Dury said in the previous half hour. And they were introducing youngsters to shooting using Ruger Bearcat. And that's a kind of a small frame, small grip, single action revolver, which would be a, a great way to introduce somebody to, to shooting because it fits their hands. It's a small gun. And obviously, you know, with 22 rim fire, it's low to it's somewhere between low and no recoil, I guess. Now, clearly, if you're starting somebody else, uh, you want to get them geared up with all of the uh, all the, the safety gear, hearing protection, eye protection. I think we've got Chris back. Hey, Chris, you there, sir? I'm here, Tom. Merry Christmas. How are you? Well, Merry Christmas. Chris Calori, the president and CEO of Ruger. By the way, congratulations on the big uh, dividend you guys just issued. Oh, thank you. Well, congratulations to our shareholders. It's their money. Yeah, so that's right. Just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So. It's kind of, I was thinking about you and thinking, you know, you're a guy that got into this because you like guns and like shooting, and now you're dealing with stockholders and SEC and everything else. It's like a friend of mine once said, you know, if you really like what you do, eventually you move up the ladder until you end up not doing the thing you love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I still love what I'm doing, but there are days where, uh, you know, all those things with uh, shareholders, the SEC, you know, the uh, anti-gun legislation and all that get in the way of uh, just enjoying the great products uh, in our industry. So that's for sure. How did you get started in shooting and guns? Well, uh, the two influences for me with my grandfather, I started shooting with his Winchester Model 68, you know, the old single shot uh, uh, short, long and long rifle. And, you know, we start, started shooting that at, at uh, the family farm in uh Sturbridge, Massachusetts, and uh -huh. uh, then my uncle, uh, before he deployed to Vietnam, uh, would, would take us out shooting at the uh, at the local dump of all places to uh, uh, with his AR-7, and uh, we, I had a great time with both, both learning to shoot with both oh, my, the, the uh, old, my uncle and that my, was back, my grandpa. That was the old Armalite AR-7, that floating Correct. stock takedown 22. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that was the. Uh, I think uh, my friend. Uh, my friends over at uh, Henry Arms make it today, but that was the uh, yep. the original Armalite version back in the uh, in the '60s when I when I was shooting it. So, God, I, I remember the ads for those. They would take them apart, stick the action in the stock, and throw it in, and it would float. Right, right. Crazy stuff. And then, of course, you got you got into it through the military. I did. Uh, after I graduated from West Point, I was in the uh, you know active duty in the Army and uh, spent more time shooting with everything from. Uh, 45s and you know the 1911 and of course we we still had i was in an ar in an armor unit and we had uh we had m3 grease guns for the loader and driver position back then so uh oh, fun. You know, and that was right into the mid 80s before oh, uh, the m60 oh, tanks before we traded those out so i was just thinking about christmas and when we were trying to get you back on the air saying that one of the things ruger does is ruger has a a lot of options for youngsters and small, well, with smaller people, but a lot of youngsters, 
And I was thinking one of the things that, because uh, we had Johnny Dury on right before you got on, he was saying that they had the kids out at, at uh, deer camp, and they were introducing the youngsters to shooting using the Bearcat. Oh, nice, nice. And, you of know, course, now nice, we small have small frame. A, yep, yep. And low, low recoil. And uh, and that's that's the thing, of course, with with kids and first-time shooters. You want to make sure they have a, a good experience and come back for more. So. Oh, exactly. And then, of course, you've got... Uh, who who even knows how many models of 1022s you guys have? It's it's incredible. Uh, I know, and and of course, so many people that write me or send me an email talk about learning to shoot uh, with their dad or their grandfather's uh, 1022, uh, mm-hmm. which really you know makes that gun special. And you know we've made you know millions of millions of 1022s over the years, and you know uh, many many thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people have learned to shoot you know, using that 1022 as, as their first, first gun and hopefully hook them on, hook them on the, uh, on shooting as a fun and enjoyable uh, sport and, uh, you know, remain lifelong customers, both ours and other, other folks in the industry. Well, you know, and we sometimes, I think, forget to mention shooting is, uh, it's a lifetime sport. You can, you can be shooting at six and seven and you could be shooting at 86 or 87 and people do exactly that. Right, right, and I, I get the emails from uh, from new shooters all the way up to those those folks in their 80s, and they're still enjoying the products. And uh, you know, sometimes it's it's emails talking about you know why you know what we should bring back this particular model or this particular gun, and and I understand that, and, uh, you know, and I like I like conversing with people about why we why our, our product line sometimes changes. So yeah, would you like my list? <laughs> yeah, I know. I got, yeah, a forty-four mag, magnum in an LCR with night sights. That's me and my brother. There you go. Both buy one. <laughs> well, yeah. The, the, of course, what the most popular one that everybody wants you to bring back has got to be the forty-four rifle uh, semi-auto deer, you know, deer slayer. I think Carbine. It was. Yep. 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 It's like it's people say, "Why straight. don't you?" And of course, there's always a reason. It's just we don't know about it. Well, with all the straight wall cartridge uh, laws that are cropping up in the in uh, various states. Um, you know, it, it makes sense. However, uh, you know, frankly, with our acquisition of Marlin and uh, guns like the 1894 coming and 357 and 44 Magnum uh-huh. that'll be out there, you know, early uh, uh, 20, 2023, you know, mm-hmm. that we think will fill that niche for us in, in some ways, although still, still a lot of folks that like like that carbine. Right. And, uh, you know, it'd have to be a new a new gun for us. I mean, that uh, the tooling is long since gone. But we look at right. that in our product planning process. We look at that all the time. So, well, it's interesting you mentioned the Marlin. I mean, everybody is just waiting and waiting, and not patiently, I might add, about uh, getting right. the new Marlins. <laughs> uh, are we going to be able to? I mean, I guess the real question is, are you going to be able to handle the production level because the demand is huge? It is. I mean, right now, as as you know, as uh, here we are at Christmas time, we've got the uh, 1895s and several flavors going out there: the SBL, GBL, and Trapper. Uh, the 336 will be out very very shortly, and uh-huh. uh, you know you'll see that beginning of the year in 3030, and then uh, followed by the 1894. And so, and the 1894 is actually uh, on a separate production line in our facility in North Carolina. And that will actually, when we, when we get the 1894 introduced, that will more or less double our overall production volume because that's a separate line, separate folks building it. You mm-hmm. know, and, and as, as you likely know, the, the 1895s and 336s are what we call a round bolt configuration. They're made at Ruger on the same line. The 1894s will be on the second line, and that will give us a greatly increased uh, production capacity. Well, that's good news for everybody. Kind of a little bit of yeah. a Christmas present for us. Any particular memories that you have of guns or hunts or anything around the Christmas season? Well, you know, it, Tom, that's a good question. My, uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, my my grandfather on my mother's side was my primary influence, and then my uncle before he deployed to Vietnam was another big shooter and uh, and gun owner. And I remember being in my grandmother's uh, house, looking through American Rifleman. You know, of all all the guns, I was I was hoping to get for Christmas, and I didn't get I didn't get them mm-hmm. one year. I didn't get anything. Yeah, you know, I got plenty uh-huh. of presents, but no, no firearms. Uh, but I did get a uh, it was a Crossman 760 pellet gun, which was you know still a lot of fun. But you know, it's one of those things. I you know, sometimes you, you get those memories of things you didn't get rather than the things you did get. That is so interesting. I have the exact same thing. I don't know. I was 12 or 13, and for some reason, uh, I got. 
a, my present was a like a rubber tipped dart gun rig for shooting ducks at a spinning target and all. And it was <laughs> fun, but I was wanting a real gun at that point, not a toy gun. Right, right, right. No, so, I, I get it. So, <laughs> so there you so go. So then eventually, yeah. folks like uh-huh. you and I go on and we can get plenty of guns as adults. So that's been a good Well, been a exactly great right. And you know, one of the things that Johnny was saying, and, and I really echo is, you know, as adults, we learn there's so many people that we all know who said, you know, one of these days I'm going to, whether it's I'm going to buy that gun or I'm going to go on that hunt or whatever it is. And I am very much of the attitude of, you know, you got to make that one of these days things happen because you don't know what's going to happen between now and then. You you may not be able to do that thing later on. Right. So true. I mean, especially this time of year when you reflect on people that, you know, good friends that we may have lost uh, over the course of the year. You know, it's uh, do it now while you can, enjoy it, get outside, take the family, take a new shooter. I mean, uh, you know, introduce them to shooting, take a, you go out there, you mentioned the Bearcat, take a, take a Bearcat or a Wrangler out to the range with a, you know, 22 for a new shooter and let them have some fun. And uh, I found as I get older, I get as much enjoyment by uh, taking a new shooter out to the range as I do from shooting myself, sometimes more. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, it's like that old deal I always talk about. You know, you take them out and you, you introduce them and they're shooting and you make sure that they're close enough and they're hitting targets, they're having success. And then it's always the same reaction. They kind of turn around and look at you with this big smile and they say, can I do it again? Right, right, right. Absolutely. You know, and the answer is always, yes, I'll provide the ammo. You keep shooting. We're just going to do this for a while. This is going to be fun. Right. Yeah, it it is. And, you know, I... I've got my kids are in their thirties uh, now and I've, I've got a lot of their friends that come up to me and, you know, when we see them over the holidays and such, and it's always, you know, Mr. K, I remember, remember when you took me shooting, took me to the range, you know, some of them went back and became lifelong participants. Others didn't, but they always remember mm-hmm. they had a good time. So. Exactly. I was also thinking about, you know, guns are an interesting consumer product. There's almost nothing else that you buy with the absolute expectation that it will last a lifetime and be functioning at the end of a lifetime. I mean, other than maybe a set of, you know, hand tools, I mean, people buy guns and they have the absolute expectation. This thing is going to just keep working forever. Right. And they, and they're planning in some cases to pass it on to uh, their, their kids or their grandkids or, right. uh, you know, et cetera. So that's always, and that could be a factor in their, in their purchase decision, you know, and that's, you, know, you, also, you talk about regret, regrets about not going on hunts or trips, you know, same thing. It's like selling selling firearms. You know, when somebody sells a gun, uh, how many times do we hear about people say, man, I wish I'd never sold that? So. <laughs> yeah, I've got a list of those, too. <laughs> no kidding. Right. You know, and of course, it, it also puts the pressure on you as a gun maker to make products that you know people are going to expect to last generations. Right, right. And, of course, you know, our... You know, we think of Ruger as rugged, reliable firearms, and, you know, that's uh, that's kind of our mantra. We know we've got to make them last, we've got to make them accurate, and we've got to po- provide a lot of value to the customer. So, Absolutely. Well, Chris, thank you for spending some time with us, uh, you know, recording this for Christmas Day. We appreciate it, and we appreciate everything you guys do at Ruger. You make really great Made in America products. Well, thank you, Tom. We appreciate it from all the 1,800 1800- folks at Ruger across America. Merry Christmas to all of you.